Hey guys, it's Bella and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another episode of Mystery Week. I'm doing a Mystery Monday every day this week, so make sure you hit the post notification button so you don't miss a video. And also, if you guys are enjoying Mystery Week, if you are enjoying Mystery Mondays and want me to continue doing them, please let me know by giving this video a big fat thumbs up so that I know you love them. And let's go ahead, actually, before we go ahead, what do you guys think of the new background? I, well, new background, new setup, whatever. Still needs a few tweaks, like with the lighting and stuff. But when I do these videos, I feel like I'm sitting down and chatting with a friend about like some conspiracy theories or a case that I found really interesting. So I wanted to like reflect that in the space that I film in. So I wanted to film in my bedroom. So I'm just sitting here in my sweats in, you know, and just chatting to you guys about these cases and these conspiracy theories so yeah let me know what you guys think I also wanted to differentiate these from all of my other videos I felt like the other ones were not only too formal but they're the same as my beauty videos so I needed to do something different for my mystery videos let me know what you guys think so let's just go ahead and get into today's video and today we're gonna be talking about Princess Diana conspiracy theories so Princess Diana was born as Diana Spencer on the 1st of July in 1961 in Sandringham, in England. And she was the fourth of five children. She was born into the Spencer family, hence the last name Spencer. And they were like a prominent family in England, I think like a noble family. They actually had ties to the British royal family for the past several generations. In fact, both of Diana's grandmothers actually worked as ladies in writing to Queen Elizabeth. And ladies in writing are basically like a personal assistant to someone who is like a high-ranking noblewoman or a royal. So before Diana even met Charles, her family did have kind of close ties or had been closely aligned with the British royal family. And funny enough, it's probably, it's actually, actually not even funny, but Diana actually had a brother named Charles. And the way that she actually met Charles was the first time she met him was because he was dating her older sister, Sarah. Flashing forward quite a bit, on the 24th of February in 1981, Diana and Prince Charles announced that they were engaged, and then shortly after, on the 29th of July in 1981, they got married at St. Paul's Cathedral with over 750 million people watching on TV. Like, I just can't even fathom in my brain how many people... I wonder how many people watched Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Why can't I find it? It says... There was 29.2 million people in the US that watched it. Anyway, however many watched um, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding, there was, if any of you guys know actually, comment down below, let me know because I'm so intrigued, but 750 million people watched Princess Diana and Prince Harry get married, which is, that's like a seventh of the entire world. Like that is absolutely insane. It's hard to like understand the sheer amount of just pandemonium around the royal family. They have paparazzi following them everywhere. People just go crazy for them. And I actually read that at Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding, they had to spend like 42 million on security alone. So I'm sure that you guys already know about the British royal family, especially considering the royal wedding that just happened which by the way i saw this little gif of prince harry and some people thought that he was saying i'm so lucky and some people thought that he was saying i'm shitting it what one have you guys seen that gif because if you have what one do you guys reckon i reckon he was saying i'm shitting it because he like laughed afterwards so i wouldn't be like i'm so lucky <laughs> Gotcha. Anyway, um, for those of you that don't know anything about the royal family, I thought I would give just a little bit of background information quickly. So Queen Elizabeth, I'm sure you guys all know who she is. She is the mother of Prince Charles, who is the Prince of Wales. I think he might have a few other titles because when he married Diana, she got four different titles. So she became the Princess of Wales, the Duchess of Cornwall, the Duchess of... Uh, Hold on, I feel like I should just do this for all of the things that I don't know how to say. Rather say. Rather say. Rothsey. What one is Rothsey. it? Rothsey. And she was also the Countess of Chester. Diana and Charles had two children, Prince William, who married Kate Middleton, and Prince Harry, who 
just married Meghan Markle. Princess Diana and Prince Charles's marriage unfortunately didn't last and in 1992 it actually came out that they were both having affairs. I think about a month before they divorced as well, Queen Elizabeth wrote a note telling them that she thought that they should divorce and then on the 28th of August in 1996 they finalized their divorce. From the divorce, Princess Diana received a lump sum of 17 million pounds as well as 400,000 pounds every single year. She also kept the title Princess of Wales but lost the title Her Royal Highness. Diana continued to live at the Kensington Palace and both her and Charles were going to remain active in the children's lives. So I read that Princess Diana and Dodie started dating like a month after her divorce but I'm not 100% sure that this is true, especially because if they did start dating that early, I don't think they came out in public and showed their relationship until around the summer of 1997. So this Dodie guy that she was dating, I think that I forgot to mention, his name was Dodi Fayed. He was the son of Muhammad Al Fayed, who was this like mega rich Egyptian billionaire because he was like a businessman. He had a bunch of different businesses. In August of 1997, Diana joined Dodi and his family on a vacation in Paris. But unfortunately on this vacation, on the 31st of August in 1997, Diana and Dodi were killed in a car crash in the Pont de uh, Pont de Lama, I'm. The driver of the car, Henry Paul, also died in the car crash and Diana's bodyguard, Trevor Reese Jones, was the only survivor of this crash. And so this is where the conspiracy theories begin. So before we get into the theories, I will tell you guys a bit about the car crash. Dodie and Diana were leaving the Hotel Ritz Paris and they got into a black Mercedes S280 along with the driver Henry Paul and Diana's bodyguard Trevor. And they were headed to an apartment in... I'm gonna put the name on the screen because I know that I'm not gonna be able to pronounce it. When I actually went to Paris, I had to show all of the places I wanted to go on the screen of my phone because every time I tried to say where I wanted to go, they were like, this guy. Nobody in the car was wearing seatbelts. Oddly enough, this was really strange for Diana in particular because she was always pictured in cars wearing seatbelts and putting her seatbelts on. So it was very unusual for her not to be wearing a seatbelt. So in the early hours, I think it was like just after midnight. So the very early hours of the 31st of August, they had just entered the Pont de la Mar, Pont de la Mar tunnel and the driver lost control of the vehicle and collided into the like um, guard in the middle of the tunnel. Pillar, that's the word I was looking for, not a guard. The crash was absolutely horrific and the car was just an absolute wreck. Henry, the driver, died instantly in the crash. He broke his neck and Dodi died almost instantly in the crash as well. Trevor, her bodyguard, actually survived, but he had really, really bad injuries. I think he had like to have a facial reconstruction after this, after the crash. He could not remember a thing. I think he had a very vague memory of when the f crash very first happened. Diana kind of was really disorientated and then she realized what had happened, realized that Dodie was dying and just started like screaming his name and crying and that is the only memory that he has and it's very vague. Diana also ended up passing away a few hours after the crash at the hospital. An ambulance arrived on the scene within about 10 minutes. I believe they took about an hour trying to free her from the wreckage, got her straight into the ambulance and they had a doctor in the ambulance because in France, the most important thing and their protocol is to try and treat the wound of the victim in the ambulance before trying to get to the hospital. Like it's more important in the ambulance than at the hospital whereas in England it's more important to try and get the victim to the hospital instead of trying to treat their wounds in the vehicle and this actually caused a lot of confusion within this conspiracy theories which we'll get to later on but 
they get her into the ambulance and then they rush her well not rush her they actually drove quite slowly it took them quite a while to get to the hospital which was about four miles away when they got her they wheeled her into emergency surgery and spent about two hours performing life-saving surgery on De well trying to perform life-saving surgery on Diana but unfortunately she did not make it shortly before 4 a.m. Princess Diana was pronounced dead due to cardiac arrest so the weird thing about this and there is a few weird things about this otherwise there wouldn't be conspiracy theories with there. initially it was reported that Diana only suffered from a broken arm and a concussion and they actually told this to Prince Charles he was even planning on coming to visit her in the hospital because Obviously, if you hear broken arm concussion, you think that they're going to survive. Although when they got there, they realized that she had internal bleeding, which is why she went into cardiac arrest and died. Another fact that a lot of people found interesting is that it took the ambulance between an hour and 15 minutes and an hour and 45 minutes to get to the hospital. They stayed at the scene of the crime in the ambulance for about 40 minutes before they even left for the hospital. Although, as I mentioned in France, it is more important there or their protocol there is to try and treat the injuries of the victim in the ambulance so that explains that but a lot of people were very confused I think a lot of people didn't look into this and didn't realize the different protocols in France because in most places that's not the case the most important thing in most countries in most places is to get the victim straight to the hospital but a lot of people do believe if they got to the hospital sooner that Princess Diana would still be alive on the way to the hospital the doctor in the ambulance actually forced them to to stop the ambulance about a minute away from the hospital like they could literally see the entrance of the, t the hospital they could almost touch it but he ordered them to stop because apparently her injuries were getting too bad or something and this was really shady to me because you're literally a minute away from the hospital if her injuries are that bad just get that minute to the hospital and get into the surgery on top of this the ambulance drove really slowly to the hospital which is why it took them so long to get there and a lot of people actually believe that they were trying to make her injuries worse in the ambulance on the way to the hospital although like I said a lot of the conspiracy theories that the ambulance um, the team in the ambulance had something to do with this or they were trying to kill her on the way or trying to make her injuries worse on the way um, those conspiracy theories do stem from that just lack of knowledge I suppose on the difference between the French procedures and elsewhere in the world so I think there was just a lot of confusion there and especially considering um, some experts and doctors came out and said that no matter what happened it would have been nearly impossible for Diana to ever survive the injuries that she had sustained anyway so th this is probably the weirdest part to me directly after they pronounced her dead like her body was still warm they embalmed her and embalming the body if you guys didn't know is basically like using chemicals to preserve the body for like a funeral or viewing and the fact that they did this is actually like so illegal and against all French laws this meant that nobody got to do a thorough medical exam it meant that nobody could examine whether or not her body was tampered with it also meant that they weren't able to test whether or not Diana was pregnant or not I believe because a lot of people actually believe that she was pregnant at the time but we will get into that later another fact that I found pretty strange is that they immediately cleaned the tunnel hosed it down um, and people were back driving through the tunnel and everything was back to normal completely clear within about three hours and like I understand wanting to get things cleared up for traffic and whatnot but this was Princess Diana that died in this crash, that was in this crash. I feel like they should have done some forensic testing or at least should have investigated the crash a little bit. Even if they thought that it was just a complete accident, I feel like it's strange that they didn't even investigate the crash at all. Mercedes themselves actually refused to have a look at the car and some people believe that this is because they knew that it was tampered with and they knew that if any qualified expert had a look at the car, they would know that it had been tampered with. Interestingly, 
enough, the specific black Mercedes S280 that they use was the only car available to rent. It had also just been stolen and bought by the rental company that rented it to Princess Diana. Apparently there was also a microchip missing and this microchip um, controlled the steering, the acceleration, the braking, and the navigation. And some people think that it was actually replaced with something that could control the vehicle from the outside through like a remote and that somebody used this to purposely crash the car. So that is most of the actual information that I have for you guys on the crash, which is interesting because despite the amount of paparazzi that was following them there was no footage of the crash there is of course photos of the car wreckage but that's about it so with that let's go ahead and get into the conspiracy theories now this first theory well it isn't really a theory but a lot of people blamed the paparazzi for this accident. The paparazzi, as I mentioned, are crazy when it comes to the royal. They're crazy in general, total assholes. But when it came to the royal family, like it was next level, still is next level. It was even worse at the time of the crash because Princess Diana and Dodie had just started dating. So everybody wanted a glimpse into the new relationship. They wanted to know what was happening, who he was and what they were doing. And of course the paparazzi were more than happy to oblige because I read that one photo of them kissing went for about 500,000 pounds. They had just spent, I think it was about six days on Dodie's father's yacht. They looked really happy, really fond of each other. So yeah, I guess everyone was just really interested in what was going on. There was actually a lot of rumors going around at the time that Diana and Dodie were going to get engaged and they were going to announce their engagement within the few days around the crash. They were waiting for it to happen any minute. There was also rumors going around that Diana was pregnant. So a lot of people thought that they were going to announce this as well. And another thing to factor into this was that Dodie was an Egyptian Muslim. And at the time, unfortunately, that was not the most most accepted thing in the royal family. They were very conservative. So that is another reason why people were just so incredibly interested in this new relationship. So anyway, there were paparazzi waiting for them everywhere. And there was paparazzi waiting outside of the hotel for them to come out. So what they did was they wanted to divert the paparazzi. They had some cars out front of the hotel. So people thought that they were going to come out at any moment, but they were actually leaving through the back entrance. Unfortunately, there was paparazzi out there as well who alerted everyone at the front that they were going out through the back. And so like, you know, they all knew where she was. They all decided to follow them on their motorbikes. They just had a ridiculous amount of paparazzi following them. There were actually, I think, 10 paparazzis that were arrested and were under formal investigation because of the crash. Seven of them, I think, were arrested at the scene and then three of them were arrested five days later. And honestly, in my opinion, rightly so, they were crazy. And rather than doing anything to help the scene, they were just taking photos of the wreckage. Like some of them even went as far as to climb on top of the wrecked car to get photos of the inside of people that were dying inside the car. Out of the 10 that were arrested, nine of them were charged with involuntary manslaughter, but all of the charges were dropped except for I think three of them, which were charged with convicted of invasion of privacy and had to pay one euro. For their crimes. Something that I forgot to mention earlier actually is that it was believed that the Mercedes got into like collided with, was cut off by, or was like having kind of some sort of incident with a white Fiat Uno? Uno? Fiat Uno. Fiat Uno. There were a bunch of different reports about this car. There was one that said it was driven by a paparazzi named James Anderson, who was following Diana. And there were some other reports from witnesses saying that they saw this little white Fiat literally like fleeing the wreckage. Police did confirm that this was a real car that was there, but they weren't ever able to locate the driver and they weren't able to ever substantiate any of the claims about it. This car though actually brought up quite a bit of speculation and actually a few theories that the paparazzi had something to do with Diana's death. So the first theory was that they were chasing her and kind of 
pushed the Mercedes to make it crash. The second theory is that they encouraged an environment where a crash could take place. And the third is that they accidentally created a situation in which conspirators could exploit the situation and kill Diana and the people inside the car. The next theory is, and I do not mean to offend anyone at all, this is just the theories that I have read up on, is that the royal family had something to do with this. The royal family had multiple reasons and multiple motives for wanting to do something like this. As I mentioned, there were rumors that Diana was pregnant with Dodie's baby and also rumors that they were planning on getting engaged. In fact, Dodie was apparently looking at jewelers. He apparently had jewelers coming to them to look and one staff member at the Ritz Hotel said that he saw a jeweler go up to Dodie's room. A lot of people have said that the royal family is very conservative and have a lot of conservative values. So the fact that Diana might have been getting engaged to an Egyptian Muslim man or was pregnant with an Egyptian Muslim man's child was just not accepted by them. And they just couldn't have him become the possible stepfather of the King of England. Another thing to factor into this is that Diana did apparently have a troubled relationship with the Queen and on top of this I don't think that the, the royal family liked her very much because well she seemed to think the royal family didn't like her very much as well because she did break royal protocol quite often. She did things like she broke the dress code, she was very open with the press, very open, very raw. You will ever be Queen. No, I don't. I don't think many people would want me to be queen. Actually, when I say many people, I mean the establishment that I'm married into because they've decided that I'm a non-starter. Why do you think they've decided that? Because I do things differently. Because I don't go by a rule book. Because I lead from the heart, not the head. And do you think that because of the way you behave, that's precluded you effectively from becoming queen? Yes, I, well not precluded me, I wouldn't say that. Um, I just don't think I have as many supporters in that environment than I did. Than I did yeah. They see me as a, a threat of some kind. I think every strong woman in history has had to walk down a similar path and I think it's the strength that causes the confusion and the fear. She was even open about her marriage with Prince Charles, which a lot of people uh, in the royal family, I think, weren't happy about. She often spoke out about mental illness and eating disorders. She spoke openly about how she herself had struggled with bulimia, which she actually said she felt were a result of the stress of trying to keep her marriage together in front of the media. She also raised awareness for HIV and AIDS, and she was publicly shaking the hands of and hugging HIV positive patients as well as Brazilian AIDS orphans, which was at the time um, HIV and AIDS were very misunderstood and there was still a great deal of stigma around them. So her doing this was very, you know, like she at one point walked across a minefield in Angola to spread awareness about landmines and she was just a very hands on princess. A lot of people referred to her as the people's princess. She was and probably still is one of the most adored and loved royal, which is why people referred to her as the people's princess because people loved her. She was like a national treasure and I completely understand why. And I could honestly go on about, you know, Diana and all of the things that she did and all of the ways that she broke um, protocol as well, royal protocol, but it just, like, you know, the things that I've already said just goes to show the motivation that the royal family would have to do this. And again, I don't mean to offend anyone at all by saying this. These are just conspiracy theories that I have researched. I didn't come up with them. I'm not accusing anyone. <laughs> Diana herself actually believed that she was going to be killed by the establishment. Diana had written a few letters and she gave them to her butler, Paul Burrell. So nobody knows if these are real or not, but he did release them to the public. These letters were super concerning. So she talked about how her life was dangerous at the time and that she believed that Prince Charles was planning an accident for her. She said that he was planning brake failure and that he was 
was planning that there was going to be a head injury of some sort to her so that he could clear, clear the way for her to marry this other woman. I think she referred to her as Tiggy. She also mentioned how she had been battered, bruised and abused by the system for 15 years. So like I said, nobody knows if the letters were real or not, but she had actually voiced some of these same concerns while she was still alive. Her bodyguard was killed in an accident, which she actually believes was a conspiracy. She was reportedly very scared of Charles and her butler said that he would often find like mats rolled up or her like looking under things to make sure that she wasn't wiretapped. So when Charles and Diana married, obviously they had you know, shared security. But when they divorced, they said that Diana could keep the same security, but she didn't want to because she felt like if she had the security there, that everything she did and everything she said would be reported back to the royal family, which is, you know, probably true to be fair. So she hired her own bodyguard. And that is all for that theory. So now we're gonna move on to the next theory, which is to do with the driver, Henry Paul, and the fact that he was drunk. There were newspaper reports that his blood alcohol level was through the roof, like 1.74 or something. And a lot of people thought that this was a lie, including his family. So they asked for it to be retested, which it was, and it came back with pretty much the same results. The test also showed that there was a drug in his system called albenzadol, I believe it is, which his doctor said that he was not prescribed. And there was another drug called acamaprostate, I believe it is, which his doctor said that he was prescribed but wasn't found in his system. They also found very high levels of carbon monoxide in his system, which was interesting because he died immediately because his neck broke, which means he didn't breathe in any air at the scene at the wreckage so how would this carbon monoxide have gotten into his lungs it didn't make any sense some people actually think that this means that it wasn't his blood at all and they used the blood of a suicide victim which would explain all of the things in his system and the drug missing from his system another reason that people think that this wasn't his blood besides the carbon monoxide was because there were photos and video security footage of him from that night and he was acting totally sober he didn't seem like he was on any drugs he didn't seem like he was drunk at all so you know this raised a lot of suspicions about the blood test and this actually ties in with another theory that he was in on this and actually intentionally caused the crash now this is part of a much bigger theory that princess diana was killed by mi5 or mi6 and they are like the british secret intelligence service. There was multiple different theories about this. One was that there was a few rogue agents and they decided to take her out because they thought that she was a threat to the throne, which meant that she was a threat to the stability of the state. Some people also think that there were rogue members that believed or that they feared that she was gonna convert to Islam because of Dodi and therefore her children would follow and they didn't want that, so they, decided to kill her. So there was this guy named Richard Tomlinson and he was a discharged member of the MI6. In 2008, he was a witness in the inquest into the death of Diana and Dodie and he suggested or said that MI6 had been monitoring them before the crash and that Henry Paul might have been an informant to the MI6. Henry was actually the head of security at the Ritz Hotel Paris, and apparently he was not meant to be working the night of the crash, but came in just to drive Diana. People who believe this theory say that the claim that he was drunk the night of the murder was actually a lie spread to the media to cover up the killing. There are a bunch of reasons why people believe this theory, such as the fact that he didn't look drunk at all, um, also the fact that he seemed to have a lot more money than he should have been getting, which is probably because if he was an informant, he would have been getting paid by the MI6. This Richard guy also said that he had seen plans in 1992 that were almost identical to the way that Princess Diana died, but these were plans to kill the Yugoslav president. He said that they planned to assassinate the Yugoslav president by causing a really bright light, which 
We're going to get into the bright light thing um, very soon, but basically, well, maybe we won't get into it. I'll just tell you now. Basically, there were a bunch of witnesses that said that there was this really bright light, which happened just before the crash. And, you know, there was obviously lights of paparazzi. There was headlights. But this light was apparently much brighter than any headlight and any flash from any photo and a bunch of people reported to see it. Richard did end up retracting his statement oddly enough though. Another agent actually came forward on his deathbed. His name was John Hopkins and he was an 80 year old retired agent of the MI5. And he claimed that he was a part of 23 different assassinations by the British intelligence services between 1973 and 1999. He also claims that one of these 23 assassinations was Princess Diana's and that he was on this assassination case. Is that, what I, is that what you would call it? An assassination case? There was actually another former agent who also spoke about some interesting things. She said that there was proof that there was MI6 interest in this. She says that looking after over some of the evidence that it was obvious that they were in on this and they did intend to seriously injure or kill her. She said it wasn't just about whether she was pregnant or not because they'll never even know if she's pregnant or not because as I mentioned before, and as this FBI agent, they embalmed her against all French laws. She also said it was because Princess Diana's campaign for the landmines, to raise awareness for the landmines, was a big success, and also because it was reported that she was about to go into campaigning on behalf of the Palestinians. She said that you can imagine someone of Princess Diana's profile doing something like that, and they just would not tolerate it, so she was taken out. She also says that she thought that they had been planning it for a while and that it was perfect timing that they did it when they did. The next theory, which I think is the most unlikely of all the theories, is that this whole accident was faked by Diana and Dodie so that they could get away and be free and just live their lives. I think this is unlikely for multiple reasons. One, there's no evidence to support it. So this is literally the entire theory that I've just told you. That's it. They just... Or like, oh, she's sick of the paparazzi. I personally don't think that she would ever, you know, just up and leave her children. She was a very hands-on mother, which was like almost a first in the royal family, I think. She breastfed, she sent them to public school and let them have like a real childhood. And, you know, it was just so clear that she loved her children. And so personally, I don't think that she would have done that. And the last theory is that this crash was actually not targeted at her. So there's two theories within this theory. And the first is that they were actually trying to kill her bodyguard. There were actually conspiracy theories about Diana while she was still alive, which she actually seemed to believe herself. In 2004, Diana spoke in an interview about an affair she had had with her bodyguard, Barry Danicky, Manicky, who she described as the greatest love that she'd ever had. She said on tape that the affair was found out about and so he was kicked off the Royal Protected, protect, Protection Agency and killed. So he actually died while on a motorbike and he collided with a car that came around a junction. So people believe that this was set up by the royal family, although the driver that he collided with stopped and stopped immediately and had agreed to help with the investigation. Which brings us to the second part of this theory and the last theory that we have, and that was that the target was actually Dodie. Whether it was a business enemy of his father or once again, the royal family, because they didn't want him to marry Diana and the crash was only intended to kill him. Or maybe it was like bad circumstances and maybe they didn't expect Diana to be in the car, I'm not sure. And that is everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a comment down below with any theories that you guys have heard of that I missed out, any information that I might have missed out as well. And hopefully I did this justice. Um, I don't really do, I think I've only done one conspiracy theory video before, but I really enjoy them. So if you guys do enjoy conspiracy theory videos definitely let me know in the comments down below and hopefully I will see you in my next video bye